This week, doctors from the Apollo Multi-Speciality Hospitals in Kolkata reported the first known instance of a plant fungus, known so far to be harmless for humans, infect a 61-year-old plant researcher. This is the first such case in the world for the silver leaf fungus, which is known to infect a variety of woody plants, fruit trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. The fact that new fungal pathogens can jump to infect humans is a cause for concern and in this episode, I will take you through the details of the case and its implications. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. The extent to which fungal infections can wreak a havoc in our lives was seen during the second wave of the COVID pandemic, when we saw an unprecedented spike in the cases of mucomycosis or black fungus. The primary reason as to why fungal infections can be difficult to treat in humans is because fungi are eukaryotic organisms like humans, which means they have many similarities to our own cells. This makes it difficult to find drugs that target the fungus without also harming human cells. Bacteria are prokaryotes, which is why antibiotics are able to target them easily. Now, what is the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Prokaryotes are single cell organisms that lack a nucleus and other membrane bound organelles. Their DNA is typically found in a single circular chromosome located in the cytoplasm. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, are typically multicellular organisms that have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. Their DNA is organized into multiple linear chromosomes contained within the nucleus. Fungi also grow more slowly than bacteria, which means that it can take longer for the effects of antifungal medications to become apparent. Like any other pathogen, fungi can adapt and develop resistance to antifungal medications over time, making it difficult to find drugs that remain effective. Also, fungal infections can occur in many different parts of the body, including skin, nails and internal organs. The location of the infection can affect how difficult it is to treat as some parts of the body may be less accessible to drugs than others. Overall, treating fungal infections in humans can be challenging and often requires a multidisciplinary approach involving careful diagnosis, use of appropriate antifungal drugs, sometimes surgical interventions. In this case, a 61-year-old male patient went to the hospital complaining of hoarseness of voice, cough, recurrent pharyngitis, fatigue, difficulty in swallowing and anorexia for the last three months. The man had no history of diabetes, HIV infection, renal or any chronic disease, immunosuppressive drug intake or grave injuries. On conducting a CT scan, the doctors found a paratracheal abscess or a collection of pus located adjacent to the trachea, which is the airway that leads to the lungs. It is typically caused by a bacterial infection which can occur as a complication of various conditions such as pneumonia, tuberculosis or a foreign body in the airway. The doctors collected samples of the pus but after several lab tests they realized that this was not a bacteria. They also realized on further testing that this was a fungi but its species could not be identified. Finally, the team sent the samples to WHO Collaborating Centre for Reference and Research on Fungi of Medical Importance, where genoming sequencing finally revealed that the fungus was Chondrosterium puropurum, also known as silver leaf fungus. The patient, a plant mycologist by profession, was working with decaying material, mushrooms and various plant fungi for a long time as part of his research activities even though he did not work directly with silver leaf fungus. The fungus typically enters a plant through a wound or natural opening and then spreads internally, interfering with the plant's vascular system and causing discoloration and eventual death of leaves, branches and even the entire plant. While the fungi can be damaging to plants, it has also been studied for its potential use in biological control of invasive plant species, particularly woody weeds such as blackberry and Himalayan blackberry. Research has shown that the fungus can infect and kill these invasive plants without harming non-target species. 
But until now, the fungus was never seen affecting humans. The infection was treated by completely draining the pus and then administering antifungal medications for 60 days. After two years of follow-up, the patient was absolutely fine and there is no evidence of recurrence. So far, only a few hundred types of fungi out of the millions that exist are known to be able to cause infections in humans and animals. The fact that it is possible for plant pathogens to cause diseases in animals and humans is a new idea and that raises questions about how likely these infections are to occur in healthy and immunocompromised patients. If a fungus is able to escape our immune system, it can establish itself as a human pathogen. Fungal species that can grow at human body temperature can become human pathogens. These pathogens can enter the body through damaged skin or respiratory tract and typically affect immunocompromised individuals. Since the fungi can also cause infection in plants, it can further spread to crop systems and produce toxins that contaminate our food. Chronic exposure to such toxins can also increase risk of cancer. Over the past few decades, several new pathogenic fungi have emerged including the multi-drug resistant fungus Candida auris which is now a significant threat worldwide. The worsening of global warming and human activities can contribute to the emergence of new fungal diseases. Climate change can have indirect effects on human health by altering the geographic range and prevalence of certain diseases. For example, changes in temperature and rainfall patterns can affect the distribution of disease-carrying insects or alter the survival rates of infectious agents outside of human hosts. This can lead to the emergence or re-emergence of diseases in new areas or changes in the timing of severity of outbreaks. It's also worth noting that some fungal species can cause allergic reactions or respiratory problems in humans, especially in people who are already susceptible to respiratory conditions such as asthma. Climate change can indirectly impact human health by promoting the growth of certain fungal species which could exacerbate these health impacts. This case report highlights the possibility of plant pathogens crossing over into humans when working with plant fungi. The cross-kingdom pathogenicity demands more research to be done in order to understand the mechanisms involved and develop recommendations to control and contain these infections. That's all for this week. I am Mohana Basu, Assistant Editor at The Print. Do follow us on social media platforms for the latest news updates.